Hey, long time no see. It's actually Buddy Desk now. Uh, been a while since we've made a video. Uh, I've just been really busy. But I've been recently contacted by FNI RSI to uh, have a look at some of their gear. So um, this one took my fancy, the uh, High Precision Internal Resistance Tester. They sent me this for free. Uh, it's used for testing batteries, the uh, voltage and internal resistance. Very good for if you're doing any work with uh, you know, battery packs, uh, remote control cars and stuff, remote control uh, hobbies. Uh, like off-grid power, you know, going full driving, you're t testing your batteries, battery banks and all that sort of stuff, you know, Tesla Powerwall sort of stuff. Anything where you're going to be uh, testing to see how healthy your battery is and also for matching batteries for building a, um, a battery pack. So uh, that's what this thing does. It's for testing to make sure your batteries are healthy and uh, how much power they can deliver and you can do calculations from the readings from here. So we've got a uh, manual in there first up bunch of different languages what's we got Ch uh, Chinese English uh, maybe that's Spanish or something oh there's Russian there as well so manual a little QC pass tag and we have the unit itself so let's open that up and there's our unit Nice little handheld thing, screen at the top, buttons in the middle, uh, USB charge on the side there, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and the, uh, of course the connection to the cables. So we've got Kelvin cables here, USB-C charging cable. I think that's data as well because you can uh, connect this to your computer and uh, upload like CSV files from all your measurements. So if you take a bunch of measurements from uh, batteries or from cells, you can then uh, upload that to your computer to make reports. And all that sort of stuff. So we've got some nice Kelvin leads here. Kelvin uh, connection is important for this sort of reading because it's the re internal resistance is very low on many batteries. So you need to make sure that you're not measuring the uh, resistance of your cables and only that of the uh, the cell itself. So that will plug in like that, and we can make sure that's all screwed in there, nice and turn it on and there we go so the features of this thing what have we got it's on the back of the box here okay so it's exquisite and convenient design yeah it's convenient exquisite yeah okay i'll give them that uh automatic test voltage in and internal resistance display measurement results on the same screen so it's got the two results you don't have to scroll this and that or select things sorting mode okay it's got a sorting mode so you can have um eight it says eight groups so you can uh, bin your uh your cells into eight different groups so then that way you can categorize them and make sure they're matched that's nice Automatically screen battery quality. So I guess that'll tell you if the battery is good or not. Uh, or the cell, battery, cell. Uh, support historical records and export of historical measurement data tables. Yes, that's the um, CSV export. Uh, it is instrument test signal frequency. Ah, yes. Okay, so this tests with an AC signal, one kilohertz AC signal. Um, this is the industry standard of like testing batteries more accurately than uh, with DC. Some testers, some cheap testers will do a DC resistance test. That's not so accurate because you get like a, you end up charging and discharging the battery depending on which way you're testing and all that sort of stuff. You get the chemical effects in the battery, but with an AC signal, one kilohertz, it's going back and forth. So it negates any of that charge discharge sort of effects of the battery and you get much more uh, accurate internal resistance result. Uh, so that's nice. It's measuring range. Here we go. Uh, up to plus or minus 100 volts DC. So you can do some, uh, you know, high capacity or high voltage batteries. And um, the resistance range is up to 200 ohms, 0 to 200 ohms. Uh, within plus or minus 0.5%. There's a bunch of ranges there. Normal working environments, negative 10 degrees to 45 degrees. Uh, the user can do calibration as well. If you've got like... Um, voltage source and that sort of stuff you can calibrate this yourself and uh what else we got there it's got a 1000 milliamp hour internal lithium battery which is charged through the usb port there 
So enough of that. Let's see how this thing works. So first of all, of course, we got the tab. We're going to peel that. Hey, it didn't peel off properly. Hang okay, on, hang on. That's a bit unsatisfying. Uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Got that peel. Nice and shiny. All right, so I've got the lights turned off so we can see the screen better. Uh, let's have a look at the menu system and see what I've got to play with. So I guess that icon there. There we go, system settings, uh, sorting mode. So let's right arrow there. Let's go into the sorting mode. No. Hold it in. No. Nah. Right arrow, icon, right arrow, icon. Nothing. Uh, OK. You've got to hit the OK button. That would be nice to... um. So return there. It would be nice to have the uh, icons on the screen on the buttons match. Maybe a firmware update can, uh, you know, turn turn right to go into the into the uh, menu item. But uh, yeah, okay, no big deal. So that's the uh, the screen for binning. The eight you can have up to eight bins, and uh, it's got a pass and fail there. And uh, yeah, you can uh, categorize your your cells and. Uh, yeah, match them all up so that you're uh, you get the most performance. So let's go back, look back, hold it in. Come on, there we go. Uh, history records. There won't be anything in there. We've made no um, no measurements. But that's what will be exported through the CSV file through the um, USB port. Uh, voltage calibration and resistance calibration. So if you've got a um, a good power supply that can give you a real stable voltage and uh, some resistances, I guess. You can uh, calibrate this thing to make sure it's reading spot on. Volume setting for the beep. Time setting, that'll be for your um, your CSV file as well, so that all your readings will be time stamped. Uh, brightness setting, let's see if we can go, oh, we're at 100%, okay. No, oh, come on, 100, okay, if I hold that in, no. Do I just hit okay here? Okay, I hit OK. Sometimes you got to go back. Sometimes you got to press OK. That's a bit, yeah, that's a bit unintuitive. Language uh, on English. I think it's got English and Chinese. Auto power off. That'll be the auto power off time. And factory default. So let's go back to here. And um, I guess now we can get some uh, some batteries and see what this thing does. All right, time to test the battery tester. Uh, I've got my Hewlett Packard 4338B milliohm meter here. This will test uh, not just milliohms, but it will test batteries as well with the one kilohertz signal that this one uses. So it's a direct comparison. So we're going to compare with this and this because they do use the same uh, measurement method. I've got a bunch of batteries. We've got a uh, D size and AA size uh, alkalines. We've got some 18650s. We've got a Dyson branded 2700. We've got some uh, coin cells, a CR2032 and an LR44, and a prismatic lithium battery, what like you'd use in your uh, remote control car. What's that? A Turnergy, I think. Turnergy brand? Zippy Compact, whatever. It's from uh, Hobby, Hobby King or something. Anyway, uh, I've got the probes here for the uh, 4338B. These are a, a cool little pin probe, like a pogo pin, but they're Kelvin. It's got the metal on the outside for the shield or the... Uh, the current and then you got the or the force I think and the measurement is on the center there so let's try out the D size battery first polarity in this case does not matter and what do we get if you look up here you'll see the uh, the reading 72 milliohms this thing's beeping is about to turn off there you go there's the auto off function 72 milliohms on the D-size battery. And what does this one say? So this one, because it measures resistance and voltage, we will get the polarity correct. Now it does say in the manual for this, don't just probe on the end like that, because you won't get the proper Kelvin connection. You've got to like clip it on, like spread the, uh, the connections. So if I can get myself organized here without knocking everything over 
and I'll knock everything over and I'll spread that and I'll spread that and what do we get? 72 well that's pretty good pretty close 1.6 volts because it's brand new battery um, our double A, what's our double A say? 62.7 yeah no worries, 62.7 61.7 Hopefully you can read that. It's a bit tilted back, but yeah, 62-ish. So that's good. So we're, we're looking pretty good, eh? Um, let's try the Dyson one. 15.7, so that's much lower, being a lithium. 15.6. Yeah, it's, it's reading within the ballpark, isn't it? How about, what's this one? This is a an old Samsung. Um, supposed to be... 2,600 milliamp hour but it's reading at 1,400 it's an old one so that sixty-one milliohm, 61.8 we'll call that and then if I clip it on here I'm just going to clip them on there like that and like that 63 and if I can get a good, I'll squeeze that down there. There we go, 63. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not finding any weird outliers. Now, a funny one that might be interesting to do, this one, I'm going to have to change the range on this. Um, because it's, it's going to have a much higher internal resistance. These can have up to 20 ohms of internal resistance. It doesn't like it. But if I change the range, so I want level, we're going to go down one. So change that range to 100 microamp. Now it should give us, there we go, 21.4. Uh, 21, 21 ohms. Let's see if this baby can do it. A little bit lower. But 19.3. So we're in ballpark. Yeah, that's all right. So I can measure these automatically. Let's do this one. This is an LR44. So I'm going to put this range back up. Now this one's going to be even fiddlier. 1.1, yeah, 1.1 ohm. All right, what does this one say? So I'm going to clip that right on the outside like that. And this one, now these cables are kind of thick and not so pliable. 0.95. So that's a little bit lower as well, but I mean, you're still getting a good idea what's going on. I'm not going to complain too much when it's down in the weeds. All right, let's give this one a go. It's a 11.1 uh, volt, three cells. So there'll be three cells in series. And uh, just a standard prismatic lithium. So let's get these in. This is going to be like the other stuff, a little bit funny. Okay, 8.2 milliohm, 8.3 milliohm. All right, now let's do this one. Now I'm gonna stick these in, but when I put them in, I'm gonna just like open them up once they're in there, so they're not touching here, but they're touching on the inside of the plug. So I'm gonna do a Kelvin connection. Once I get them lined up, let's have a look. Bonk, there we go. Okay, opened. 8.6 milliohm, 8.7 milliohm. 11.3 volts. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to fault this thing. It's um, close enough. There's internal resistance going to change here and there a bit. It's like, yeah, you're not going to get an exact eight digit reading of internal resistance. Even the temperature of the battery you hold in your hand, it's going to change, you know. But uh, this and this are uh, both within the ballpark. So I'm going to give this a thumbs up. All right, just for a quick voltage test. Uh, I've got the 34461A 6.5 digit multimeter here hooked up to my Fluke 731B 10 volt reference and you can see there exactly 10 volts. Uh, I've got the lights off a bit shadowy because the screen's not so bright and if I unplug it from there hook it up to the battery tester what do we get? 9.9924 yeah that's good not a problem at all voltage is accurate Good job. So that's the FNI RSI HRM10 internal resistance tester. The uh, voltage
test is all good against the key site and the uh, the fluke tester, the fluke calibration standard. The um, internal resistance test is good against the HP. It's all within the ballpark. You hold the, the battery in your hand, it's going to change your internal resistance. If it's a hot day, if it's a cold day, same thing. The chemistry is going to you know, alter slightly because of the temperature. So, yeah, you, be aware of that. But between this and the HP, no problems at all. I was, I was happy with the reading. So, uh, yeah, you got the Kelvin clips which come with it, which are fantastic. Help to negate any uh, contact resistance. Nice piece of kit. If you need to build some... Uh, some battery packs, test some cells, match some things. This will get you get your job done. So yeah, no problems there at all. The only, like I said before, the only problems that I would see is that if we go into the the menu, the right icon and the right icon, maybe we could fix that in the next uh, firmware revision and uh, show us the uh, firmware revision like on the boot screen or in the menu somewhere so we can check if we need to do an update. But apart from that, that's not going to affect the actual readings you're taking. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give this two enthusiastic thumbs up. It does do the job and it does it pretty good. So I hope you found that interesting and somewhat informative. Uh, stick around for the next video, which will come out eventually. And, uh, yeah, check out FNI RSI because this is a good bit of kit. We'll see you in the next one.